That song came to you by request from someone who's mending up in a field hospital, Petty Officer Elidor Masis, who was honorably wounded in action. And You've now got this. to be kidding. You mean Elidor requested his own song? <laughs> that idiot. <laughs> That's so like Elidor! <laughs> Greetings once again, my friends, and welcome back to Geek News Anime Night, where I take a particular series solo and go through it episode by episode, give you the highs, the lows, and everything in between. I am your host, Adam Mickelson, a.k.a. Drac. I hope everybody's having an awesome day or night when you're, or when you're listening to this. And once again, we are dabbling back into Gundam 8th MS Team, and we are at the halfway point of the series with episode 6, Battle Line on the Burning Sand. Uh, yet another good episode. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the Gundam Wiki. Hopefully they have a better summary than what we've had in the past. An informant tells Kiki that he saw a light flying through the desert a few days ago. Shiro and the rest of the 8th team move out to see if they can find the testing range of the Absalus. Mikkel is distracted from his duties, though, because he keeps reading BB's letters. Ugh. So, yeah, the premise of this is that, yeah, they, they get information on a large mobile suit that's been out in the middle of the desert in what looks to be like a testing grounds uh, for the Absolus. And so Shiro obviously gets permission for the team to go out to the desert to see if they can track down the Absolus and finally end it, uh, to which we actually get some interesting uh, dialogue and character moments while they are waiting for the Absolus to come out. Uh, mostly from Shiro, as well as a little bit from Sanders. But a lot of time is spent on two, my two least favorite characters so far, Kiki and Mikkel, because one of the big plot points is Mikkel has received a letter from his darling BB, that's his girlfriend, and she's worried, that, and probably because of all the drama that he puts in his letters, uh, she's immediately worried that you know he's not going to come back, and so she's wondering if they should just stop seeing each other or whatever. And that's obviously got Mikkel flustered and he's not sure how to respond to it. Uh, and Kiki, we find out has developed a little bit of a crush on Shiro. Hence why she found this information. And she was insistent that she be the one to help out Shiro in finding the Absolus. And unfortunately Shiro is too busy on the mission as well as kind of mixed up in his head over his feelings for Ina to notice that Kiki has those feelings. So obviously this is going to be one of those weird romance episodes while they're trying to stake out a mobile armor. Not really gonna work. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, get into the uh, notes that I took for this. So why on earth would you pop out of a mobile suit while interviewing a witness for anything? This was actually kind of a cute moment where she goes to interview, where Kiki goes to interview the witness. And as soon as he says, like, he has the information and out of nowhere, Shiro just pops the Gundam's head out of it, out of nowhere. And uh, I guess for an intimidation tactic, I'm not sure. That was that was silly. I, I kind of liked it. Oh, nice. Yeah, they're looking for the Absolus. So uh, this was actually a cool moment because obviously this team would be the only one that would know about the Absolus. They're the only ones I think that have had any kind of encounters. I kind of wondered if this was part of the village incident from the previous episode, but more than likely this was just based off of their first encounter with the Absolus. Gundam's in the desert. All the problems I'd expect for mobile suits. Yeah, they had lots of problems. Uh, specifically like Chiro having his mobile suit trip in the sand, and so they had to fix the foot. This is one of the examples of uh, Mikkel's distraction because they're trying to fix the foot joint, and <laughs> Chiro almost dies because he gets his shirt caught in the, the gears while they're trying to fix it. So, yay, distraction. Karen and Sanders investigating a weird glass-like pattern in the desert, probably from a beam weapon, but very cool looking. Especially when they pan out and you see how far the beam went. Kinda scary, but it was actually cool to see them investigating it and looking for whatever analysis they could get. I especially like Karen was basically dangling from that, that uh, I don't know what they call it, but it looks like the emergency cable to let the mobile suit pilots just kind of... Uh, uh, float down to the ground and so she was doing that over a open ravine 
and investigating. That was that's got to be pretty freaking scary. Uh, so it looks like a mobile suit corpse or something from further investigation. I was guessing that this this part was just like wreckage from the Absolus testing, but I wasn't 100 percent sure. And wow, Kiki's gorilla sure do get around. Uh, this especially I love the fact that she basically kicks them back to the village, uh, probably because she wanted alone time with Shiro. Ah, looks like Mikkel finally got that Dear John letter, and because of that, someone's probably gonna die. And it came damn close. It really did. I hated this whole distraction because ultimately I knew it was coming, and I think it was actually self-inflicted by Mikkel, and it didn't do him any favors this episode. Uh, but I did like the fact that with Elidor gone, Mikkel's workload basically quadrupled because he had to do all of the things that Elidor was doing with the tanks and on top of that also help with mobile suit maintenance. So that was actually kind of cool and added a little bit to his annoyance, but well, kind of your fault, dude. And of course, I had to add this. He's bitching about it the whole way. Oh, wow. Kiki has a crush on Shiro. Never would have guessed. Typical, she gets mad at him for seeing her bathe and then secretly gets a crush on him because he told her off. That's the only reason I can think that she has a crush on him is because he literally looked her in the eye and, uh, you know, she just assumed he was being a man with all his misogyny and all that. And he just kind of bounces back while well, you were nice to look at. And on top of that, you're a kid. What on earth would you know about me? Uh, and so, of course, that's like, I must have you now. And yeah, it drives me crazy when stuff like this happens. Hey, look, dumbass failed the readiness test because of his freaking girlfriend. Shiro really needs to. This is I'm going to be I'm going to be referencing this quite a bit in the notes. Shiro needs to transfer Mikhail or Mikhail. He is not helping this unit, especially with the you know, he wasn't very helpful initially, but now he's a freaking distraction. So or he's distracted as all hell. So he's not helping. Uh, and this was when they were basically trying to test the trap for the Absolus that they had set up and he wasn't paying attention. Uh, cool idea from Sanders for collecting water in the desert. I actually like this. This is a cool military tactic where he basically tried to collect the dew and moisture that would collect overnight and try to save that in the water so that they could keep going with their with their stakeout. Uh, good God, Kiki and Mikkel are going to get this unit killed. Please send Kiki back to Big Boss Shiro. Uh, yeah, this is where she decides I'm going to stick around and I'm going to feed you food and I'm going to fix your shirt. And I'll, uh, it's so dumb. Uh, and then comforting moment with Kiki consoling Mikkel. This was this was a dumbass moment that actually turned into kind of a touching one where she grabbed the Dear John letter, but it really isn't a Dear John letter, and tried to run off while she was reading it. Where This is where Mikkel and Kiki are basically acting their damn age. But then she realizes what she did and tries to console Mikkel and, and tries to get him to understand that, you know, that it... It doesn't have to be this bad. Like, you know, just because you can't reach out to her now doesn't mean you she she won't get your feelings or the stuff that they were basically saying. But it, it was actually it started off annoying, but it was actually fairly, uh, fairly heartwarming at the end. And then, oh, my gosh, please, Kiki, deliver Mikkel's damn letter. I'm begging you because she actually offers to deliver the letter at a nearby village. And frankly, that would have been a good idea because then Kiki would not be caught in the crossfire or anything like that. I'm kind of surprised that Shiro was against it. But yeah, it's dumb moments. I don't care what you, I don't care that your feelings are hurt, Kiki, because you've annoyed me to death with your various attempts to get the team killed. And yeah, the, again, my thoughts on Kiki and Mikkel in a nutshell, they've they've tried to get this unit killed who knows how many times. And I'm saying tried because like their stupidity is just almost intentional at this point. It's driving me crazy. Uh, good God, the drama is so cheesy just to just get Mikkel off the damn battlefield uh, because obviously Mikkel, after Shiro yells at Kiki and says, like, you shouldn't be on this battlefield anyway, then, of course, Mikkel has to be White Knight and try to defend Kiki's feelings because she he can obviously tell that she's got feelings for Shiro. Uh, no, you're in the middle of a damn mission. Stop it. Uh, Sanders did Mikkel a kindness that he frankly didn't deserve. This was when Mikkel, I guess, according to Sanders, was way too unbalanced. And so he, he basically said, you take my mobile suit. I'm going to take your job and we're going to cool things off for a little bit. And ultimately, it seemed like it was a good idea, but I don't think that we could say that given what the ending was. 
good lord, what is Shiro going to do when he finds out? Uh, so, uh, yeah, what is Shiro going to do when he finds out who the pilot of the Absolus actually is? He is so focused on the Absolus in this episode that I just kept thinking, like, this has to be the moment where he finds out that it's Aina. And then we we have, like, the the uh, Kira Athrun moment where things start getting really hard for them. Interesting how Elidor's song starts playing on the radio. Nice callback to him. This was when they're all having kind of a cool off moment. And then we got to hear love and peace. And of course, the best part about that was I literally said rolling on the floor, laughing my ass off. It was requested by Elidor himself. <laughs> and it actually says like this was requested by a soldier in a field hospital right now named Elidor Masis. And now I know how to say his last name. I love that concept because, of course, he would want to get as many ears listening as he could. And then we get into the meat of the episode because the Absolus arrives for a test run and they spring the trap on it. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out very well for the 8th MS team because they're not able to stop the Absolus. And while it's trying, so Shiro tries to make sure that it can't escape and grabs onto the the frame of the Absolus and gets just bucked and crushed around uh, while Ina's trying to knock him off. And that's when they accidentally find out in their radio transmissions that Shiro's in the mobile in the Gundam and Ina is in the Absolus. And immediately Ina goes straight up into the air and they lose track of Shiro completely. And that's kind of the cliffhanger of this episode is that now Shiro is in enemy hands and they don't know what to do. And so everybody's worried about Shiro. And the moment I theorized, theorized about earlier has officially happened and she freaking abducted Shiro. Nice cliffhanger, honestly. I did like the moment uh, because she's like, it's you. And you're like, it's you. And whoo, he immediately goes up into the air and they lose him. Uh, it was actually a good cliffhanger for the episode. Uh, but given all of the re the relationship crap, uh, this has to get a three out of five uh, because the, the good moments at the end and even some at the beginning I liked, but then we had to deal with all the Mikkel and Kiki bullshit. And I know that some people are probably going to be mad because I'm sure that there's a Kiki stan out there, but I don't like her and I don't like Mikkel. And I think they both need to leave the series because they're cutting away from all the character development that I really want to see. I mean, last episode, I got really cool details about Karen. I wanted to learn more about her and she gets virtually no spotlight in this episode. I thought I was going to get some spotlight into Sanders when he takes over in the tank and has Kiki in there. And it's it looks like he's going to have a moment where he tries to console her, but it's quickly cut off because he just he looks at her and goes, I'm I'm not good at this whole talking thing. <laughs> so I, I I like that, that we got, you know, this tiny little bit for si for Sanders. But I wish we would have gotten more. And even the Shiro stuff started to get weird. Uh, like, I didn't think he actually had a crush on Ina. I think he was just more enamored with the fact that he had the watch and all that. So I do overall like how the episode ended, but it was way too much effort to actually get to that point. So three out of five. And that'll go ahead and do it for this episode. So if you're listening to this on YouTube, thank you. I appreciate that. If you liked it, go ahead and leave a like and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. You can check out not just this podcast uh, where I'm going through Gundam 8th MS team, but you can also check out some of the other things that we've done, including if you're a Gundam fan, me and Andrea actually took on G Gundam, and that was her first time ever seeing it. So you can get our thoughts there and the discussions that we had on that. And of course, you can check out all the other podcasts that I'm doing uh, there as well. But if you're on podcast platforms, you can listen to us on Amazon Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Player.fm, as well as Spotify and be able to support us there. And all of it is appreciated. I, I cannot begin to tell you guys how appreciative I am that even this series is working out. I really didn't know if me going solo was going to be a good idea, but... Gundam fans are happy about it, so I will finish this through to the end, and hopefully we'll be able to continue doing this. But uh, we are at the halfway point of this series, so obviously things are going to start heating up, and I will see you guys next time for Episode 7 of Gundam 8th MS Team. Until then, take care, my friends.